So when I was asked to give some memories about the campground, I was excited to do that because it's just been um, just a staple in my life. Um, but I thought, how do you put 54 years worth of memories into a little video? Um, but it's just had such a great impact on my life as well as uh, many other people's. And some things that came to mind was like children's camp. I don't remember a time of never going to children's camp. So I was there every summer as a, as a kid and then as a youth. And, and back then, Breakaway used to be called Tina Rama. So we would do that. And then, a, of course, family camp. And then I started thinking about the wonderful people that God placed in leadership there. We had Uncle T and Miss Alice for a while, and, and uh, then Dennis and Miss Bonnie took it over, and then after that, Alan and Miss Bonnie Pullen did that. And here recently, we had Trey Lawson doing that. And we're just thankful for all the hard work that all of those people put into and invested in us. I also thought about just the lifelong friends that I have, that some of them still live on the district and some are all over the United States and, and we still have connections because of going to camp. So I really thought of people, not only friends, but also those people who gave up their time as adults to come spend time with kids and teens like me and they invested in my life as well. Some names that came to mind is like Max Downs and uh, Mark Allison seemed to always be there. Um, Johnny Wallace was there, and of course, Mr. Ray Moore was always there. And, and the other memories came to my mind about the way the campground used to be as comparison to what it is today. Um, the old dorm, the old long dorm over by the baseball field, and how, how the teens would always try to beat the counselors in a softball game there. I thought of the log cabin that used to be over by the, um, by the pond where we, we used to stay some summers. Um, there used to be a little bridge, it was probably about this wide, that was over by the Brooks cabin. That was the only way to get to the tavern, at, I mean, to the uh, amphitheater. Um, and those old shower rooms, who could forget that? You'd have to walk practically two miles to take a shower. We always seem to make it, though. But the centerpiece of the campground has always been the tabernacle. And I love our tabernacle today, but I have great memories of the, the old open-air tabernacle all those old pews and and the big fans that used to be at the back um, come to mind and they had those two dorm rooms up front one on the right and one on the left and I really think they designed that so that the Charleston Calvary teens would make it to chapel because it always seemed that we we had to be put in those dorms but when I think of that old tabernacle and the new one as well I think about the many lives that were saved I think about the lives who people became entirely sanctified at those altars of prayer there. I know that I was called to ministry at those altars and I know many other people have. And people have, so many people have paved the way for me to be able to have a lifetime of memories of the campground. And as I look at it now, as, as I'm growing older, I, I think it's our turn to pave the way for future generations. And I mean that in several ways. I, I believe that it's our place to spend time there, to be camp counselors at children's camp and youth camp and stuff like that. I think we need to join in on the work that's at the campground as far as um, the work days. I think we could have better participation there. And I, I, I also think financially, we need to do what we can because that campground has just meant so much over so many generations. We cannot um, do our part because it's so important in the lives of those coming after us. So I pray that we leave the legacy that was left to us with the campground.